everybody and welcome back to Very Biased Opinions. It's not quite as a special of occasion as the last time we did Premier League predictions because there's no, uh, well, from my point of view, it's a good thing because Tom can't reach out and touch me. But, um, you know, this is quite not the same. But, Thomas, you better get a quick word in because this is going to be me talking for two straight minutes otherwise. Yes, it's no, really that's good. Enough. Right, let's move on. Before we do get to the Premier League predictions, and we've got some great games, one in particular, which is Tiger the Tiger, to talk about, we do just have to thank everybody that gave their predictions in last week and had a quick chat about it, because we did have nine people that did it, which is fantastic. And we're just going to uh, run down how everybody got on. So um, basically, everybody, pretty much everyone kicked our ass. So that's what we want. <laughs> Um, if you do just want to skip that and go straight to the first prediction, the timestamp is up in the corner just there. So you can just go to that time, uh, or you can see it in the timeline down below. But let's start with friend of the channel, as everyone is, Shane O'Donnell. Shane did pretty well. He got two correct scores in there, uh, but he ended up with... The, the, these are all done, by the way, before Brighton, before Brighton and Palace. Uh, so um, whoever is the final winner, we will flash that up on the screen in the final video. But we're actually filming this as at the moment it is 1-0 to Crystal Palace at half time. So we can't just give that one that score yet. So, so far, uh, Shane O'Donnell got uh, seven points from the nine games. Well done to Shane. The next person, uh, Nat Neil Say, we've got some bangers of names, Tom. Nat Neil Say, um, not quite a good week. Actually, one of the few people that we did beat. Only one point so far, but obviously, again, he might get the Palace one right. Patrick Silk, say it again for Patrick. Not quite such a good week, Patrick, but thank you once again. Giving you scores in just one point for Patrick, but uh, do try again next week, guys. Manish Thakpa, who has done quite a lot of predictions in the past, he came and smashed in with three correct scores. Um, getting most people got like the most people got like the West Ham and the Everton score correct. There's a lot of three points in that one, but he um, he got a lot of three pointers, and uh, so he's done, like, he got three correct scores and another score on top of that. So he's got ten points. Roberto the Hornet. Who does he support? Uh, Brighton. A lot of Hornets. Or Watford. Um, he did really well as well. Uh, two correct scores in there and a bunch of other bright uh, forecasts as well. So I make that nine points by my shoddy maths. And uh, Robert Allen, friend of the channel, pessimistic one. You would know he would do exactly the same as we are usually known for doing the funky and the weird scores. But he ended up with three points. Uh, oh, good. Sorry, I'm going to get these names wrong. Suhail Zubair. You couldn't make it up. Great name. Um, eight points for Sue Hale. Well done. Um, another good, good showing there with two correct scores and two correct forecasts. Here we go. Here we go. Aurelie Emmanuel Josephine Tam Tambula Tampu Blur oh Armagon. Sorry. Aurelie, thank you very much. And your name is amazing. I butchered it and I'm sorry. But you got seven points. You got well done again. This little, these little weird two games of um, Everson and West Ham, you got correct, just like most people do, except for me and Tom. And Darren Warburton as well, again, another solid show with seven points so far as well. So well done to you guys. Um, I say myself and Thomas only got the three points. Tom with one correct score, uh, Everton Norwich, <laughs> and uh, myself with three correct scores. But obviously, uh, we, as I said many times, we don't know what the final result is, but we will. Flash that on the screen now. And the overall winner for this week is, and Thomas, if you want to blow them some kisses, that would be great. That would help a lot. There you go. That's your prize. Is Thomas's? I don't know what that is, but it's coming your way via the internet. But again, if you want to get shout outs next week, thank you to everybody. Uh, just leave your predictions down below. We'll run through everybody's uh, scores next week as well. But let's crack on with these predictions now, Tom and. Um, I think it's only right to start again um, with your beloved Red Devils after a difficult week. How are you feeling knowing now that the dream is over? It is Man United versus Everton. I'd like to congratulate all the other teams in the top four for apparently already beating us. I'd like to congratulate Arsenal who are on their way up. Uh, we are obviously on our way down. Um, we are conceding the title now because we're a point off the top after six games. It's tough, Ian. It's really tough to be a Man United supporter right now. We're not even really good players. 
awful. Absolutely terrible. Uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, it's just been the same case of what it has been most Slender Man United, where Ole Gunnar Solskjaer doesn't seem to be offering up a huge amount of different game plans, and every now and then Man United it just seemed to lose or draw a game out of absolutely nowhere, and that's what they did here. I a lot's being made of the fact that Fernandez took the penalty over Ronaldo. I don't see it being an issue, but Ian, any thoughts? What? He's the penalty taker. What, he's... Fernandez? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. why? I mean, Andy's usually pretty amazing yeah. at taking penalties. So, look, it's always going to happen. It, I mean, that thing was stupid, and um, that, that happens. People miss penalties. Get over it, Man United fans. Just, you know, you had, you had chances to get level in that game or get a goal other than that penalty at the end, which I still think was a little bit harsh, but there you go. But um, the goal, do you think it was offside? I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's, I mean, when you look at like the one left that had this allowed, yeah. you can see all these sort of Colossal points. Yeah. But when you see it first time, you just think like, that's a bloody good header from the corner. <laughs> That Leicester game last week was the one where most of the decisions everyone was like, wait, really? Like, didn't weren't didn't feel harsh last week when Leicester had him go against him. So this yeah, week having it go the right way, you're like, well. That's right. But I mean, as a manager, he's going no, to clutch onto these things, isn't he? And uh, anyway, Henderson would have saved it, but you know, he got the hair and go. Um, and, um, but Tom, Rafa, Rafa is the, is the genius. How, he, he's surely going to, Bring an Everton side there, and they're just gonna uh, they're gonna hammer Man U, aren't they? Yeah, I mean Everton, Everton. Uh, I got nothing, Ian. I got nothing. I don't understand how this team even pick up wins. I mean, they beat Norwich two 0 It's fine. There's nothing special going on there. I don't think Rafa Benitez is the second coming of anything else. And like, they're a bit it's like last Spurs year. light. It's last season, they started well. Yeah, and they'll probably take you know taper off into and win their eighth place trophy like they usually do. This, this is, you know, they've got a bunch of like kind of talented players and no one that actually wins games and no one who seems to be able to go more than like four. Like, Andros Townsend is the definition of like a four game player. Like, he just does it. He's incredible for three or four matches and that's it for the season. We've seen it from Damari Gray a couple times, although I actually still think he's quite good. But Richarlison is doing it year in, year out. Dominic Calvert Lewin had like 10 good games last year and that was all his goals and everyone just pretends the other 30 six game 26 games around it were non-existent but they're not that good so man united really should beat them they should definitely score some goals in this and they kind of have to because they've lost what three of the last four games and you can't sign ronaldo and do this like unfortunately that is just the world you live in like you can't sign the greatest goal scorer of his generation and not win games so i think they're gonna get goals i think they'll win two nil completely agree with you about the Everton thing as well i mean that's the thing they got I was pretty much exactly what I was going to say. They've got so many flash in the pan players that are just turning it on at the moment. Um, but I just want to say one thing, I mean, uh, just me saying this really. James Rodriguez, what a disappointment all the way through his career. Uh, it literally, he is almost like the, that is almost destiny that he would go and play for a club like Everton, where he would like play well for about half, you know, a few games and then do nothing and then just kind of limp away because he doesn't really fancy it anymore and go with players like a guitar. This is why you don't buy players after one good World Cup. Arsene Wenger always said it. But, um, you know, that, that seems to be a story of his career. What a wasted talent. But um, I think Man United need to get back here. Thomas will win. Let's go a bit bigger. Man United 3, Everton 0. And with that, it comes to title decider number two in two weeks because it's Liverpool hosting Manchester City. No other game needs to be played after this one. This is nope. it. This yep. is the one that decides the title ultimately. And uh, this is this is Liverpool. This is Merseyside versus Manchester, isn't it, this weekend? With yep. Man United Everton and Liverpool versus Manchester City. But look, I think this is... This is going to be, all eyes are going to be on this one. It is a real massive game. I can't, I, I personally can't wait to see it. Um, I think that both sides look in pretty good form. You know, Liverpool had an amazing three all draw with Brentford and uh, City went and did the impossible. They beat Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea. Oh yeah, Chelsea, by the way, they're also not going to win the title. They are actually handing back their, their slip for it at the end of this. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. Yeah.
The yeah. city beat them. Oh, city beat That's them. what I'm saying. I'm saying this is it. City, city beat them. They were fantastic. They looked like they're right back in the hunt after three matches. City were completely out of it and everyone was complaining they made enough signings. Now they're up the top beating everyone they play. Liverpool flow forward really well, but haven't quite figured it out at the back yet. They were playing Tony. And he the is greatest the striker the league has ever seen. He is the, um, yeah, I think I think he is going to put up Ronaldo Messi numbers in a couple of years. But oh, yeah. uh, look, as we've said before on this channel, there's no Liverpool fans here. There's no Liverpool fans. I know we had some Liverpool fans commenting, but there's no Liverpool fans between me and Thomas. I think, and but this is a hard one for you, isn't it? What, what, where does your hand? head and heart lie in this one with your two kind of enemies playing against each other. We all know that I have a, a main crush on Jack Grealish, so I just have to back Jack Grealish in this, don't I? Like, they I can't be, stand uh, anyone. If they just signed Kane, they would have scored more. Well, they would have. But I'm going to go with City again. But I think, I, it, I might be wrong, Ian, but I feel like every time these two sides play each other, there's shed loads of goals, and there has been for the last couple of years. It's like one of the few matches where neither manager sets out to draw the match. Both of them set out to win, and it goes a bit a wire at times. Am I right? Uh, you, I feel you may have plucked something out of Tom Dickman fantasy land there, but um, you, you, it sounded good, so we'll run with it. City four, Liverpool three. Wow, what a game! Make sure you check that out on Sunday, folks. But I think I speak for everybody when I say we want City to win this game. We need City to win this game. Come on, the citizens. Liverpool nil. Man City 2. I think that Man City's defence has been just rock solid. And I thought Diaz was amazing against Chelsea. The way he handled Lukaku was really impressive. Yeah. yeah. Also, let me just say, uh, last time they played was 4-1 to City. The time before that was a one all draw. The time before that was 4-0 to City. So, there are goals. Hey, I stand corrected. Right, it's time for another title decider because King Ralph's men are visiting Chelsea. I think they're going to face, face a very angry and very annoyed Chelsea King Ralph side um, after they lost that game to City. And I think that most people, like with, like with Tuchel's tactics, everybody's going to point out the flaw of to say they went into that City game and just tried to defend, 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 defend. And then when they did go a goal down, they suddenly opened up and looked a really good side and attacked them. And it looked like a real, it was a real fantastic second, like end to the game or second. 40 minutes of the game uh, where Chelsea came out and it was really, it, it really, they really felt like equal to City, whereas at the start of the game, where they just sat back and defended, it, it, it kind of almost didn't do them any favours. But that's a tactic that Tuchel won with before, so he was unlikely to change it. But when he plays sides that are inferior, he's just going to go out and dominate them. And, and I, I see Chelsea getting a very nice, comfortable win here, and it's tough times for the Saints. But I think Chelsea will win 3 0. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 3 0. Brighton and Hove Albion versus the Arsenal. You better start talking about Brighton because um, I have got the honour of talking about the greatest side in world football. But at this point, Thomas, Brighton, at the time of filming this, it's unlikely. But they could also be top of the league by the time people are watching this video. Chelsea, United, they both had to hand back their title ambitions. They're over because Brighton had a chance today with a win to go top. If they did do that, obviously they then became title winners and it was going to be a Brighton Premier League title. They were the Leicester. Unfortunately, they're 1-0 down right now because... It might, it's a good achievement for them to, if they were top of the league. They've had a good start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would have been great. But it was... It's just that six-game-in thing where, like, the storyline's coming out. It's like, it's Brighton's best-ever start. They've got points on the board. But we all remember what it's like. They've been 16th for, like, two or three straight years. They go on these little runs of three or four or five wins in a row. And they do it every year. They manage to put one of these guys... They put it together at the beginning of the season, and it gives them a great chance. They might end higher than they've ever, ever finished, because they normally start the year like shit. So, like, you know, go Brighton. You're going to be 15th this year. 
Yes. No remember, relegation battle, hopefully. Do, do you remember, Seagulls fans, that Southampton did top the Premier League for a little bit last season as well, uh, early on, and that they, they didn't exactly keep up with the pace. But... Go talk about Arsenal. Let's go. Let's have a talk about Arsenal, Thomas. The greatest club side in world football. They, are, they stormed back into form. A couple of little tepid 1-0 wins. And now they've absolutely dominated their North London rivals. It was a it was a really good performance. Arsenal played really well, especially in the first half. They ripped Tottenham to shreds. People like all the attacking players that we know are good came to the came to the party, including party. Um, Smith Rowe, Saka, uh, Odegaard, Aubameyang. They all played really well, and they all like, Tottenham just couldn't handle them. And it was a great win, but again. It doesn't solve all your problems. You have to remember that, Arsenal fans. You've been in these situations before with Wenger, with Arteta, with um, the the Spanish chap, who I, I can't even remember. Emery. There we go. Thank you. Where you have little purple patches of form and you have these great wins and everybody just thinks, right, we're back now. We've cracked it. That's the game plan. We've got to find consistency. These players have got to turn up every single week now and play in that way before people will start to take this seriously. And this is another good test that Arsenal need. They've fallen down to Brighton before when they've gone down to the Amex in recent seasons. Um, they've been bullied by Brighton in the past as well. Uh, I, I think Neil Malpe is probably still on the uh, the naughty list in the Arsenal lights. But so they, they, yes. I mean, yes. again, it's a, good, it's a good test for them. I mean, they need to perform and they need to play well. And, um, I'd like to think they'll come away with another victory. They should do. Um, I, I think having the weeks off in between the Champions League thing is actually going to help them. Um, this is where you see that they don't have to like waste a load of energy and they can just be ready for this league game. So I am going to go for an Arsenal win. I hope they can get the job done. I'm going to go for a 2-1. Going to scrape through. 1 0 to Brighton. Now let's move on from Ian's soliloquy and get on to Tottenham Hotspur versus Aston Villa. The reason I want to introduce this game, Ian, is because after listening to you talk about Arsenal for nine and a half hours and us having to cut out the final nine hours, 23 minutes of it, I want to talk about Spurs being the Spursiest side in the country. Three games in, top of the league, Arsenal, bottom of the league, flying high. You've helped. Ke- ke- You've kept Harry Kane. You've kept Harry Kane. Six games in, you've conceded nine straight goals. You've only scored one. That defensive solidity we were talking about in the beginning of the season has gone completely out the window. Harry Kane looks like a 45-year-old man on a football pitch. It's basically Son Young Min versus everyone else. Like Harry Kane's literally like, no offense, this isn't funny. Uh, but he looks like he doesn't know why he's there. It like he doesn't even know what part of the pitch he's supposed to go to. He just doesn't want to be there. And uh <laughs> just just uh, uh, and, and how this did was, you lose three one? And this was a game they were more up for than most because they were playing <laughs> Arsenal. Imagine what they're gonna be like when they play the sides they don't care about. <laughs> like Aston Villa. Exactly. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> so spurs. They need they do need a response. I think Nuno's gonna switch tactics and probably go back to these Wolves days and play three at the back and make them very, very hard to beat um, because they were so open against Arsenal, it was unbelievable. But Villa are coming off one of the results of their of their recent history by uh, beating Man U. It was, a, it was they actually played really well and I thought they I thought they deserved difficult. Ian, they did deserved. they score? It's a disputed goal. We're still waiting on confirmation from VAR whether it did happen, where it didn't. It would just That's we'll fair. say that they played well. They played That's well. The they did play well, and well done, Villa. It was a good winner, a good inter. Whether it was onside or offside, it was a good header. We'll say that much. And um, uh, Martinez did a good job of putting Fernandez off. And um, yes, yeah. But Villa, but, but so Tottenham need a response. Villa will be looking to build on the good result um, draw. Uh, I'm not going to go for a draw. I think when Spurs are on one of these runs, just bet against them, Villa. We've talked ad nauseum, I think, for six weeks now about how much we actually both like this side, how well they've done, the Buendia, Martinez, all the good players they put together, and Dean Smith's made them really hard to beat. I think they're going to win 2-1. 1-1. Harry Kane, penalty last minute. 
after a storming 90 yard run that he himself made, right? Beating <laughs> like seven players. He'll take the penalty. Um, Deli Ali will pick the ball up to take it. Martinez will point, saying, Why aren't you taking it? Why aren't you? Like he did try to do to Ronaldo. Yeah. Harry Kane will then take the ball off Ali, slam it into the top corner, and Martinez will look quite the fool. Quite the fool. And on that note, thank you to all of our Patreon subscribers. Specifically, thank you to PJ Simpson, Matthew Bowden, Robert Allen, and Christina Allen. But thank you to all of you that still support us. If you want to support this channel and help us do things like this week, me and Ian are going to go to Hillsborough to watch a football game live. You're going to get tons of videos. We're going to upload tons of content over that. So if you want to see stuff like that, please follow us on Patreon. It's as cheap as three pounds a month. It does mean the world to us. Also, no matter what, smash like, hit subscribe, comment down below, follow Grandstand Better. It's your fantastic tipster website. We love you guys. And um, I think, Ian, it's time to move on to the second half of the slate, which I think will go a lot quicker in the first half because it's West Ham versus, oh my God, Ivan Tony led Brentford. Yes, Thomas. It should be a cracker though. Another, another London derby. Um, but Brentford with a game that all the fans and all the players are going to remember, three or draw with Liverpool. West Ham also had a great win over a pretty crappy lead side. Let's be fair, they're going down. Um, and um, I, I, I see this one being a high-scoring game again. I, I see it being very entertaining. But I see West Ham coming the right side of it. I'm going to go 3-2 West Ham United. Yeah, this is a tough one. I think Mikel Antonio's back, and that'll be the difference for West Ham. I hate how much is written about how great he is, because, like, last season, I don't remember him, like, carrying them to third place in the Premier League. But he is really important to them scoring goals. Brentford, though, they have shades of Villa last year. They don't have Jack Grealish, but they have this just incredible ability to flow forward. Like, people always talk about, like, the play that... Brighton put together, but I just think Brentford attacking looks great. They're really incisive. They all go in one direction. They cut teams open, but it's really simple play, right? Like, it's not like they're reinventing the wheel. They, they counterattack a lot. They beat their opponents, and they're, they don't want to lose. But that's they it, don't want to lose. When it's football is a simple game. Yeah. <laughs> and when it's played well, it is. it does look very effortless. And Bert Brentford are doing a great job. I'm just going to say on the one thing about Antonio and West Ham, um, it's the fact that he's just the focal point to the team. And last yeah. season when he was out injured, it's not necessarily about the goals he scores. It's the way they play with him yeah. being the focal point. And they miss him a lot when he's not there. Scored the winner against Leeds as well. So, um, you know, just to say, he can't be too... I don't think he's going to get an England call-up, but he deserves one because he has, has played well for a couple of years now. 2-1 to West Ham. I agree. Crystal Palace versus Leicester City. I'm going to go for another Palace win here, Thomas, because I like Palace. They've got Vieira. Vieira, what is an unbeatable, is an invincible, invincible, unbeatable. Played in a great Arsenal side. That's what I'm trying to say. And Leicester a horseshit. <laughs> I, I, I kind of push back on you every week, um, and I'm only going to push back in my prediction here because I can't argue with anything you're saying. <laughs> So, what was your score, Ian? Palace, two. Leicester, one. Okay, I'm going to go for a 2-1 Leicester win, but I do this mainly just to stir shit, because uh, they're, they're not winning shit. Fuck all. Hardy scored one in his own net. <laughs> <laughs> Leeds United versus Watford. Yeah, so, Ian, what are Leicester City? Um, I believe they are left behinds from a horse. And what is Leeds United now? Wow. <laughs> God knows. God knows that they, they, Leeds United, that panic button is well and truly been hit. I'm surprised. It's a good job you were out of Leeds this weekend. All you would have heard is um, whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> I just have this image of in Marcelo Bielsa's office, the, the minions running around with the, the axe and the Beto, Beto, Beto sign going on it. Like, they must just be shit. Like, it's been a really bad start. And for a side that, like, is all about team cohesion and flowing forward football, they don't seem to be able to do that for more than 20 minutes at a time right now. It's like, it's like they can't get the car in gear. Look, let's be logical and say, as non Leeds fans and looking from the outside, it's fine margins that aren't running their way. But yeah. let's be very biased opinions about this and stir the pot a little bit and say that, um, 
They're going down. You're going back <laughs> to the championship. You've been found out. You've clearly looked at Sheffield United's blueprint and thought, that's for us. Let's follow that. And as a result, Watford are going to beat them. 1-0. Well, no, Watford concede goals. It's going to be crazy again. 3-2 Hornets. Okay, I'm going to go with a 4-1 Leeds victory here, but this has more to do with Watford and me having the, literally it, no fouls. If I'm no nice fouls. to Watford, Roberto the Hornet may continue to give his scores. Wolves versus Newcastle. I'm just going to say one thing here again. Like, hit, People are going on about Jimenez. Goal. It's a great goal. He hasn't scored for 363 days. That is terrible. <laughs> I knew you were going to go this way. I just didn't know how you'd end up phrasing. <laughs> terrible for a striker. <laughs> Uh, what's your score prediction, you awful, awful That's human being? six months. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's six months. One nil Wolves. Quang <laughs> with the goal. It's going to be a one all draw, Ian. It's Newcastle versus Wolves. What? It says one all written all over it. Everybody's been waiting for this one. Burnley Norwich. Yeah, Burnley are finally going to win a football match. One nil. Burnley needs to win this football match. Yeah, they do. If you can't win the layup that is Norwich, then you are really struggling. And another side that at Fark is Paul Guinness, because Daniel Fark is going for a record this season. He is trying to take Sheffield United's crown of being the worst Premier League side. And I think they want to try and lose every single game. 2-0 to the Clarets. Do Norwich ever try and stay in the Premier League? Or do they just... Is this just it now? They just cash in Premier League revenue every year and they'll do it for the next literally 20 years but they will never win a Premier League game or invest it in the club this season in particular they are not trying but in recent years they've managed to like get a couple of wins early in the season which makes <laughs> gives the illusion um but I think if you look at the stats it's shocking the amount of times they've been promoted they've only stayed up once I think um, at the start of the Premier League, they were quite good. They had people like Chris Sutton, F. Anakoku, um, and they, they actually like bloody did really well at the start of the Premier League. That's all long gone now. I had to literally not do a spit take there. Like, you have no idea how much I just wanted to spit by. Like, when you're around the comical genius that is me, Thomas, you're very dangerous. It, it, you're, you're, you know, you're running the gauntlet. By drinking I like, any time. I like that you, for some reason, the lead up made me think you'd say anything other than just not trying. <laughs> like, are they, is this even a real team? Is Timo Puki a real player? Is and he you, allowed? You put that team in the championship, that is money. money. How? How have they made this team? Money. It beggars belief that you can, like, ride the line so perfectly that you are terrible in the Premier League. And, like, miles better than every piece of opposition the championship has. And yet, everyone that goes up around you survives, and you keep going down. There's a, there's a Ponzi scheme in there somewhere, Tom. But let's talk about it another time, because we've got to wrap this video up. Yes, thank you all for watching this. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. Please check out tomorrow when our League One predictions come out. Check out Saturday. We will be throwing up tons of video while we're live at Oxford United versus Sheffield Wednesday, or really Sheffield Wednesday versus Oxford United. That's their home. Also, if I if you are interested in my Man United rant, I will be at Old Trafford on Wednesday. I will try and upload some videos from there. I'm watching Manchester United play a team of submarines. I don't quite know how it's going to go, but apparently they play uh, below the surface. So, do you like uh, in a bit of revenge? You. Bit of revenge in the air. Yep, yep. And the way United are playing, they will lose. Anyway, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. Please put your comments down below. We will see you every day for like the next week.